Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today I'm going to show you how I hacked my 1983 Datsun Z engine control unit. In case you couldn't hear me out in the garage there, I'm still Bill Hurd and this is still Hackaday. And today I'm swapping out my old stock engine control unit from my 1983 Datsun 280ZXT with a mega squirt that I built myself. This is a kit. It's uh, made by Bowlings and Grippo. And uh, it's, it's not open source hardware, but it's cheap hardware. And then the firmware is available. You can make changes. There's all kinds of trains to it. I'm running what's called Mega Squirt 2 Extra. It allows me to do uh, lots of uh, cool things in addition to the normal ECU functions. Now, what's an ECU? The ECU generally controls the fuel to air mixture in your car. It might control the spark, the, you know, where the spark occurs in the combustion cycle of the engine. And it can control a lot of other things. For example, I've got mine controlling the, uh, the, the fuel pump speed, things like that. So uh, lots of things we can do. But why would you want to do all of this? Well, that unit I just showed you is hardwired. It's set up for a certain amount of fuel that it expects for a certain amount of air to make the engine run at optimal. Well, if you change that balance, you'll need to change the, the, the balance of the fuel and air, you know, that, that goes along with it. So in my case, I shoved a lot more air in the engine, bigger turbocharger. Also, I made the cylinders bigger and the stroke longer, and so there's a lot of things going on, and I needed to give it simply more fuel, all right? And that uh, required like bigger injectors and a bigger fuel pump, but also then controlling the pulse width of that. I'm going to show you that in some detail. So, uh, and, and why this old cranky car in 1983? Well, some of you may know I worked for Commodore back in the 80s, and part of getting to CES shows, which were always January of, you know, of the new year, Inevitably, a Datsun Z would park in the parking lot around November and then just not move until the snow melted and it appeared magically from the snow drift. And then I would have it towed and then I would use the bonus I got for making the CS show and go buy another one. And it's kind of funny when they tow the car away, it'd be this little sad pile of rust and nuts and bolts. Uh, but it's, it's, kind of, it's a car that's kind of near and dear to me, so I spent some time uh, uh, customizing this car. So before I talk more about the ECU, I'm going to show you about how uh, the basics of how engines function, and I'll show you all the things this is controlling. Here's a block diagram of, of a kind of, of typical engine, let's call it that, uh, where the red arrows represent the trip of the air through the engine. All right. So starting from the air inlet, in, in my case, we go through an airflow meter. And uh, the reason is, in this case, is it's all about mixing the right amount of fuel with the right amount of air. Now, in my 1983 Datsun Z, there's this thing called a flapper that had a door that opened and closed, and, and it would give you a value for how much air is going through. It's kind of arcane, actually. Then it went to the throttle body, and this is where the accelerator hooks up. Uh, it hooks to, through a mechanical linkage. And this is what, you know, you're used to stepping on, how you interact with the engine. And you might think that you're adding fuel to the engine. Well, not directly. What you're really doing is opening a, 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 a stop gate that lets more air into the engine. So what you're really doing is adding air every time you step on the accelerator. And it's the ECU that figures out how much fuel then to mix with that air. But it starts with you letting the air in in most cases. In the carburetor days, same thing, except that it was the air whistling through the Venturi that added more fuel then, but, it's, but it was the air you opened up. The air gets into the manifold, which is simply a name for the area above the where the pistons are and the valves and everything. And this is where the fuel injectors spray into, in this case, um, and it mixes before it gets sucked into the pistons. And then it leaves it in the form of exhaust. So the ECU controls the fuel injection, how often, or not how often, but when to fire and how much fuel to mix in. And then there's things like the cylinder head temperature. In my case, in my Z, if, if the temperature um, sensor is broken or the wire is unplugged, my car won't run, okay? So it, it's, it, this is uh, part of how dense is the air, so how much fuel, so that's part of it. And then there's an oxygen sensor in the exhaust. In my case, I've actually added a second one so that I've got one for the loop of the ECU working and then another one for just sensing on my dashboard, things like that. 
And then there's some other little things going on, like knowing where you are in the cycle, the crank crankcase position, and ultimately control the spark plugs. Now, I'm not controlling the uh, spark in mine just yet. So now I skipped one, and that was the manifold pressure. There is a second way to tell how much air is going on, you know, how much fuel you need to mix. And that is the manifold pressure. The harder you step on the gas, the more of a suction is created in this manifold by these pistons running up and down. You can sometimes hear it whistling, you know, on some engines. And if you get a hole in your manifold, the air car won't run well or one of the hoses comes off. And it's because it's trying to pull a vacuum here, try to suck this air in, and it's, it's, it's not. It's not being measured correctly or something. Now, there's a second way, as I said, instead of using the airflow meter, you can monitor this manifold pressure. And that's what the Mega Squirt does. Uh, is, is I've, I've left my airflow meter in in case I want to go back to it. But in this case, it measures how much vacuum. Uh, when you're pulling hard, the more vacuum you get. And, and then when the blower kicks in, when the turbo, how much overpressure there is. So these are the basic connections of an ECU to uh, a fuel-injected engine. Here's the airflow meter. I wanted to show you just how ungainly this, this thing was. There's the valve, and here's or the, uh, the measuring flapper. And here's actually different shapes of elastomer uh, cut to make a variable resistor that's spring-tuned and everything. And this thing in normal operation is doing something like this uh, to try and measure the airflow. Here's a more modern airflow sensor. This is a heated wire airflow sensor. And you can actually see through this one. This is from a BMW M3. And basically it measures how much heat is removed from a heated wire by the airflow through it. So a lot better than the flapper. Uh, but again, you know, there's something to be said for monitoring the manifold pressure or the, uh, the actual airflow through into the engine. So, and BMW thought this was good enough to use on one of their sports cars. Okay, let me show you some of the cool stuff. What you're seeing here is a virtual dash panel, and you can program these, change the look and feel and everything. But I'm just showing some basic controls. And what we're doing is we have a simulator plugged into our Mega Squirt. This simulates the car. I can change the throttle position, the throttle position sensor, the temperatures, a, f a few variable things like this. And you can't see the LEDs, but they're telling me I'm at idle and that the fuel pump's on and that it's firing the, uh, the, the fuel injectors. And if you want to have a cooler dashboard, there are a bunch of others that you can select from. I'll just... So now as I modify my RPM, I could actually build this into the dashboard if I wanted to. We also have the option of doing a data logger where we can vary different things and it'll get logged by this. And then we've got a, uh, an actual analyzer that will help us with the tune-up based on our driving conditions. And we're gonna do that one last. But let's get back to basic setup. And this is kind of what it's all about. This is where, uh, I, unfortunately, I can't make it uh, go vertically because I, I don't have a, you know, I can't modify the manifold temperature. But this is the RPM, and I can modify these variables around here uh, to adjust the fuel-air mixture. And you should hear it. I can actually, while it's sitting there idling, you'll hear it go, and, and that's really cool because suddenly it dawns on you that you're controlling the actual fuel-air mixture in your car so and we can uh, show this uh, you know as a 3d view and uh, there's a lot of other maps similar to this and I will show you one on the car that's running where it actually does an oval as we step on the gas and release as the manifold pressure you know has load going up and then coast coming down I won't go through everything here but there are engine constants and uh, uh, injector characteristics, I tell things about how big my injectors are. I went to 35 pound injectors, they're called. We can control uh, how the engine gets primed. It, it squirts extra gas in there, get extra fuel in there to, to get your engine running when you first start it. And then also it will enrich the fuel based on temperature. And this is real important, at least in the case of, of my vehicle. One of the tuning functions in here is we have acceleration enrichment, which basically says when you slam on the accelerator, it tries to give it an extra shot of fuel. And actually, it's about the only thing monitoring the accelerator does is in this kind of setup. So there's a wizard in here where I can say, oh, monitor it this way. 
But if we watch down here in the lower left, I'm going to uh, change the accelerator quickly. And we get this indication right here that it just gave us an extra shot. So that's one of the features built into this. Here's a 3D uh, VE map of the engine actually running. And we see now the range of motion of the, of the manifold pressure and the RPMs with the fuel enrichment uh, shown as a spectral map with uh, the red being the most fuel and the blues being the least. All right, I'm running out of time, but there's just so much to show you that, that's possible with these things, with the, the, the Megasquirt. Uh, you know, they have things for running your detonation sensor. There's launch control. You can run nitro system. You can control your, uh, your, your turbo boost. It can act as a, as a controller. Just a lot of things. But one cool thing I wanted to show you is you can create your own outputs by uh, you pick which output you want. And then there's just a wide range of values. You can say, well, hey, if the uh, fuel load is this or if the uh, battery voltage is below a certain amount and something else is happening, the pin goes higher, the pin goes low, and I do something similar to that to control the speed of my fuel pump. So nice uh, Boolean programmability also built into this. And, and finally, I showed this just briefly before. Um, in this version, I, uh, some versions can actually do all the logging inside the Megasquirt, the version 3. Mine's an older version of the Megasquirt 2, so I actually have to my la have my laptop plugged in and running while I go out for test drives, and it will take the values that it sees uh, programmed in and compare them to what it thinks the optimal value should be based on the actual running of the engine, and then make suggestions, and you can go ahead and apply that. It's a learning ECU, in other words. And they have these now. You can, you know, for, for the newer cars that have o, o, uh, OBD2 and stuff, they plug right in and they're self-learning. Well, here you got to get a little more involved, but at least it can learn. And there's reasons for that. For example, um, I wouldn't know, like when you're going at a high rate of speed and you let off the accelerator, I wouldn't know how much to lean it off to clean off the spark plugs or to wet the, the walls of the, uh, of, of the pistons, of the cylinders. Um, but this should know tricks like that, so uh, that you end up getting a pretty reasonable tune just by taking it out and driving it, come back, and then you, you look it over, and then you save it to the ECU. So a uh, very cool feature. And finally, here's the inside. Again, this was a kit I built. Uh, so it was the last of the through-hole versions, if, if I remember correctly. This is based on a 16-bit processor called the M9... MC9S12C64, which is a 16-bit computer or microcontroller, microprocessor uh, upgrade from the old 60HHC12 by Freescale back in the 90s. And it's it's got like a 24 meg clock and 4K and 128K of RAM and flash. Uh, but it's got things like built-in CAN bus and whatnot. But the main thing is this this is from 2005. So this uh, was around before so many of the ARM variants and everything we have now. You can find lots of things with CAN these days, but eh, this has uh, some time on it. The jumpers are actually, there was an area to build circuitry, one of the few times I ever used the area to build circuitry, as I brought in some other signals from, from the big-ass connector here on the side, and I made low-pass filters, and this uh, some of this goes into my fuel uh, fuel pump logic, stuff like that. Also, um, I'm playing with uh, anti-detonation. Uh, so I don't rely on the old ECU. And, of course, drivers, big honking uh, rectifiers and drivers for the fuel injectors, uh, you know, which is in relays, which is what this thing ends up driving. So not much to it. Uh, like I said, it was an inexpensive kit that I put together myself and rivals the, uh, the features of the $1,000 kits that are out, or $1,000 uh, 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 devices that are out there today. And uh, then there was the little Mega Sim. This was also a kit, like 50 bucks or something. It's just, it's basically a VCO and some potentiometers. But I, I ended up, I, I built one and then I bought one because it was really nice to, to while working on this thing. So uh, not much to it. All right, well, I hope you found that interesting. I had a blast restoring this car. Like I said, it was kind of a legacy thing for me back from the 80s, uh, 90s, when I, uh, when I used to drive these things. And, uh, gosh, I've got a mile of welding wire in the car. I've powder-coated. I've, I've redone the engine. To, you know, oh, I opened the engine. I didn't even know what most of that crap was, and now I do. So, uh, And now I get to put this together, 
put it back in the car and get the car running again. So Bill heard from Hackaday. I don't even know what we're doing next time, but stick around and we'll figure it out together.